Welcome to Kibbutz Eilon, next to the Lebanese border. In this small hilltop village, each year young violinists from around the world gather for a unique summer program, Keshet Eilon. 21-year-old Elvira came here from the Netherlands. What I really like about this is that you all stay together and you eat together and there are so many things you can, you can do, so many activities, so, so you really get to know the other people and you get to know a lot of, of musicians. Yitzhak Rashovsky, Chaim Taub and Stefan Pikal. These violin masters came together to instruct the young generation of musicians. Ivri Gitlis is the veteran among them. Born in 1922, this exceptional musician grew up in Haifa, where he remembers a childhood of coexistence. When I grew up, we played together with the Palestinian children. We had no language barriers because the language was the language of children, from another era too. On the advice of Bronislav Huberman, the founder of the Palestine Orchestra, he moved with his mother to study in Paris. Today people are looking for sponsors, they look for people to give you scholarships. We had no scholarships. One day my mother came, she said she had found places in the fourth class, which no longer exists, of course, on a ship called the Sphinx. Gitlis arrived in Paris of the 30s. Paris sera toujours Paris. In 1935, he received the first prize of the Paris Conservatory, and his career was on its way. A career that will take him across four continents. He is considered the last great living legendary violinist of the 20th century. In 1963, he was the first Israeli violinist to tour the USSR. My first show was at a concert with the Leningrad Philharmonic Orchestra, a magnificent orchestra. In the first recital, the room was almost full. In the second, there were five or six hundred people who couldn't get in, and people were fighting in the streets to get in. During the nearly 80 years of his astounding career, he met musicians from very different backgrounds. Yes, I met Brian Jones from the Rolling Stones once. He was an absolutely adorable boy. He called me one day from London asking me to take part in a film of the Rolling Stones. I went there and I improvised with them. Unfortunately, at the same time, Yoko Ono, John Lennon's wife, John Lennon was also there. She came there and she started screaming. I almost wanted to... In addition to being a musician, Ivri Gitlis is also a writer, teacher and even an actor. For Truffaut, he hypnotized Isabella Gianni in the story of Adele H. He contacted me. He wanted me for the part. I didn't say no. You know, I think if I had any authority in education in general, I would make sure everyone acts at least once in a while, in theater or in cinema, because it's a way to live life in full. At the age of 92, Ivry Gitlis devotes his time to passing on his experience. At Keshet Eilon, he advises the young musicians on how to externalize their emotions. If you have emotions, if you have emotions and you have the instruments with which to express them, well, you're lucky in a sense because it helps you with your emotions. It's cheaper than going to a psychiatrist. He tries to bring out that what actually is already in, in me. And I don't really show it because I have so many problems <laughs> in my head or in my technical problems that I can't really express how I could do it. And he tries to, to bring it out. After two weeks of workshops and meetings, the students of Keshet Eilon go back home, full of memories, experiences, and good humor of one of the greatest violinists of our time. 